Hello and welcome to chapter one, Discovering a World of Art. So I'm going to go over the overview of the activities and homework assignments with this short video. I'm going to remind you that there's some really great links on how to upload images into your discussion post. That's going to be an important thing that you learn how to do because pretty much throughout this entire semester we will be uploading images and embedding them into your discussion post. So it's something that you need to learn. And if you have any questions on how to do that, please feel free to ask me. So here we're looking at an artwork by Andy Warhol. And let's review that concept of the physical properties. So the artist's name, Andy Warhol, the title of the piece, Silver Car Crash, the year it was made, 1963. The size of the piece is eight feet by 13 feet. It was a screen, a really large screen print. So he had taken images from a newspaper, transferred them into this massive screen, and then applied that to his massive canvas. So that was his process. And its genre is fine art, which would be hanging in a museum or a gallery. So one thing that we're gonna be talking about with this particular um, week's learning concepts is this piece about value. And so here we're looking at a piece that sold in uh, 2013 for $105 million. And so I'm gonna introduce you again, we talked about that in the um, introduction of this course, looking at Mark Rothko's work and that piece around value. We're gonna continue looking at that ever so slightly as we navigate the different concepts throughout the semester. And so one of the reasons this piece was valued at that price has to do with the influence that Andy Warhol has on the contemporary art world. His process, his creative choices, the content in his work, um, how he kind of took this idea of reproduction to a whole different level and taking something from one context, a newspaper, and putting it into another context, an art museum, that's also influencing his in his the way that his work is valued because of the audiences that he um, connected and, and brought into these different realms. So I hope that you enjoy what we're going to be discussing and the different concepts that you'll be learning about. So um, the learning objectives, uh, we're going to differentiate between passive and active seeing. So there's a whole bunch of really great information regarding how you can quickly look at something or actually analyze it and spend some time looking at it. We're going to be defining uh, the second learning objective is to define the creative process and describe the role that artists most often assume when they engage in that process. And then finally, we're going to be discussing the different ways in which people value or do not value works of art. And so that will also be something that's covered in the third lecture. So we're looking at a piece here by Faith Ringgold, American People, Blacklight from 1967. She's one of the artists that's discussed in this week's learning unit. And I think it's a good a time to look at this painting and think about if you look at it passively, you just kind of see a bunch of people. There's clearly um, blood and weapons and a lot of chaos. But if you really start to inspect it, it's almost like similar looking people. Uh, those people are kind of made smaller to look like children. And if you start to very analyze the piece, you see that uh, you know, there's a lot of visual metaphors happening with the the overall themes that are being kind of visually thrown at you with this piece. And so one of the things that I want you to think about is how do we navigate that concept of actively seeing? And especially when you're looking at something like this that's um, very intense to view. So the overviews this week, um, you're going to need to review the PDF for Chapter 1, Discovering a World of Art. And so that can be found um, on week two overviews activity page. You can also click on the link in the PDF that's included um, on the activities page. So there's about a couple of different ways that you can get to that. Let me know if you have any issues accessing the PDF. Um, there are three PowerPoint lectures with audio that you'll be reviewing 
in the um, Office 365 that's available on Canvas. And so again, you're going to need to um, advance to the next side using the um, little arrow at the bottom of the screen. And again, keep me posted if you have any issues. Uh, there's a weekly quiz that will be due on Sunday at 11.59. And there are two discussion posts this week. Uh, the first one, public opinion. The second one, civil rights. And those are both due also at 11.59. Remember that the um, Canvas website can get kind of overwhelmed if you're turning in your work right before the deadline. So be sure to submit your work long before 11.59. Your first homework discussion post, there's a link at the top of the discussion post topic um, in Canvas where I go into great detail about what is required for this discussion post. But be sure to remember to always review the prompts. And so this week you're going to have a 300 word essay and we're looking at the idea of public art and how it can potentially create some controversy. And so you're going to want to address these three prompts. The first prompt um, being if the National Endowment for Arts, Art and Public Places program was designed to teach the public how to appreciate advanced art. How did Richard Serra's Tilted Arc test the NEA's assumptions when it installed the piece that he created, Tilted Art, in the Federal Plaza in Manhattan. So there's lots of videos that you can watch that will help you understand these concepts, but I really want to hear about your feelings as to why this piece um, had all the controversy and what the NEA should have done differently to potentially educate the public. The second prompt, I want you to talk about the side of the argument that you would fall on and why. So if you would have wanted the piece to say, talk about why. If you think it's better that the piece be removed, also include why you feel that way. And then finally, I want you to talk about any public art on your campus or in the community that has stirred any kind of debate and what was the outcome of that debate. If you don't know of any, to get credit for this, do some research because there's lots and lots of public art that has had um, different types of debate in the Bay Area. So you're going to need to have something. You can't just say, oh, I've never had that experience before. That will have an effect on your overall grade. And then finally, you're going to respond to one of your classmates' posts in relationship to the public opinion discussion post. The second discussion post is around um, the power of the visual image regarding the civil rights. And so again, I'm introducing you to three different artists that made some interesting work that relate to the concepts of the civil rights movement and how we're looking at that fourth uh, piece, the fourth type of investigation, integration into cultural context. And so you're going to pick one of the artists that we uh, talked about this week, either Kim Gonzalez Day, Andy Warhol, or Faith Ringer, Ringgold. And you're going to apply the three discussion posts that I have, the, sorry, the three prompts that I've included here. So you're going to pick a piece and you're going to upload the piece by that artist into your discussion post. And then you're going to discuss how that artwork how you feel that artwork expresses the artist's personal feelings about the intense, intense political time in American history. So you're going to want to relate that piece to what you learned about in relationship to this really volatile time in American history. And you're also going to include some references from the civil rights movement. So you're going to talk about how you feel this piece is in relationship to the concepts you learn from your research about this historical period. And then finally, you're going to talk about the role of the artist. And so I want you to pick one of the four types of roles that are included here um, and discuss how you feel the artist that you chose is using this as part of their creative process. And so just pick one and do the best that you can to sort of describe to me how you feel the artwork and the artist that you are writing about fits to this particular role. How are things going on Canvas? Um, there's a bunch of different ways to better learn how to utilize Canvas. One of them is through the Canvas guide. And so I want to encourage you to check out 
the videos and um, directions if you're having any issues. And if that's still not working, uh, please let me know and I'll try and help you out the best I can. So this week I'm introducing you to Richard Serra's work and he has a piece that's installed at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art where you'll be going um, in a short amount of time uh, to do your final project. And so when you go to SFMOMA, I will encourage you to check out this huge massive piece that Richard Serra has installed there. Um, and then you can get a sense of the size and weight and intensity of his work and how that might have a change of heart when you think about the public opinion that we're working on this week. So I hope your online experience is going really well and I just want you to know that I'm here for you if you have any questions. So have a great week. Thank you.